Hey everyone, Tracy here and I just wanted to pop on real quick today and just share a little exercise with you. I've been filming, it's Sunday here in Australia, it's winter but the birds are still chirping outside um, and I wanted to share with you a little exercise that I sometimes do. Well it's not always the same but basically the premise is that I love to take things from different sources and I also love to use what I have on my palette. So I've been filming for another lesson today for Lifebook. I've been filming an abstract class and I was looking at color play using vivid colors and then making more neutral colors and bringing those, introducing those into the palette. Uh, I'm using what's on my palette are acrylic inks, Dale Rowney acrylic inks, in Indian Yellow, Flame Orange, Emerald Green, Process Cyan, White, Payne's Grey, and Amsterdam Ink in Permanent Red Violet. I've got a couple of different brushes. I've got a watercolor pencil in brown. I've got a bit of charcoal, white oil pastel, and a few different uh, Caran d'Ache Neo Color crayons. So my my challenge is to use what I already have on my palette. So rather than waste what's there, this is a great opportunity to just quickly bring something out, try something new, use what you have, and mash up a couple of different resources. So here's what I do. So my own photographic references. So this is Lottie, who's the darling kitty of our youngest daughter, Cece looking like a queen when she comes to visit. And then I have in the same little folder, I've just pulled a few images of Instagram artists and illustrators that I've been following. Um, put the links, I'll put the links up here for you. Um, and realizing that what I'm drawn to lately is to like scrubby, loose, rough, um, playful imagery with a mixture of broad swatches of color and line work, okay? So that's what I'll be playing with today. So it's basically, you know, taking something that's my reference and doing it in the style of, um, and not, not trying to mimic anybody's style, but just more of a broad sense of what is it that appeals to me about that style and how could I bring something like this out? It might, it might turn out, it might not turn out, no promises there. Um, this type of exploration is for process. It's not something that we have to, let's get the camera straight there. It's not something that we have to have turn out. We don't have to have a perfect piece at the end of this. Um, in fact, you know, I'm going for messy, so let's see what happens. So I've got my leftover paints on here. I've got this in the middle, this big blob is mixing white. Windsor and Newton mixing white. So it's kind of transparent. And this is an acrylic wash. Uh, so it's more opaque. And then we've got, I might have to add a little bit more ink in. They might be a little bit dry, but we shall see what happens. So actually, let me just add a drop. Drop of the flame orange. Drop of the marine blue. And drop of the permanent red violet. Maybe a little bit of the green. So what I'm gonna do first is just bring in some kind of more painterly gestural marks. Um, and I'm going to mix a little bit of mixing white. Just make a really soft kind of grayish color, greenish gray. Now, if something is too bright and you want to just tone it down a little bit, like I've added just too much green there, take the opposite color. So on the color wheel, your magenta would be on the opposite side. And that will really just gray the color down. And 
give it a more neutral feel. Okay, so I'm going to get quite loose with this. No idea what's going to happen. Just kind of roughly putting in a suggestion of those windows. But my challenge is to use only what's on here. So I'm going to take a little bit of the orange, a little bit of the marine blue, a bit more orange. And that'll take me towards a brown. More orange, I put as a greenish brown, but I'll work with that. And then the sweep of the chair coming round. These greens and these pinks are going to work beautifully together because they are on the opposite side of the color wheel and I'm not going for a literal interpretation as I as I said before just trying to think whether I bring in some of that purple for the cushion or how I'm gonna put no I don't think I'll put that in just yet okay so what I'm going to do now is, okay, I don't want this to be like super, super neat. So I'm going to start with a little bit of charcoal and I'm going to just like rub in whoops, some charcoal to the wet paint. Okay, and it's going to, you can see it's taking on the paper but not taking so much on the wet paint. How do I use these materials and stay loose at the same time? Locking in Lottie's tail. Okay. Let's get in a little bit of the lines of the window. Oh, that didn't work. scratchy Or where her tail's supposed to be now. <laughs> white paint. I 
fingers.
making decisions on the fly here. Not judging it as I go. My main thing is just to use, use what I have on my palette and see what happens. <clears throat> I'm gonna wanna adjust a couple of things. Um, mainly like on Lottie herself. I feel like this comes out here. Very different than my normal color palette. But again, using what I have. And let's just bring in a little bit of line work with the charcoal.
you just want to ex <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> I think I just want to accentuate the eyes just a touch a little tiny bit of Payne's gray she has such beautiful eyes and I'm just gonna use a bamboo skewer one of my favorite tools and just add a little bit of line work in a few places so this is Payne's gray ink A little nose there. I want to be careful not to overdo it too much at the end. Just um It's interesting when you are, when you do start to kind of push yourself and you're working in a style that is not like your normal style. Sometimes you feel like you're floundering. It's like, oh, this doesn't feel familiar to me. Like, where am I going to go with it? Um, so you're trying to find a place that is in between your normal style or what you normally would feel comfortable with. And then also like putting yourself out into a different zone, into a more or a less comfortable zone, if that makes sense. Right, you know how do we get some more texture and and often that push and pull, push and pull between the um, the more opaque or sorry the more heavy bodied paints and the, <clears throat> and the more transparent inks will give you a lovely textural element. need a little bit of that Payne's Grey kind of come and just push those darks just a little more say this was going to be a short video. You just never know, do you? Never know what's going to happen. But I think I'm liking where it's at. I think I'm almost ready to, to say 
that's that. Something, I don't know, something down here. Something that's not working for me. Let me have a think about that. Uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna push that patterning back. I think there's enough going on up in the top. So what I might do is just pull that marine blue over the entire blanket as a wash and see how that feels. I like that better. kind of cute very different I've used up a lot of what I had here I could probably do something else as well maybe I will um, or maybe I'll just cover it over so that was fun hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I've encouraged you to you know step outside of your comfort zone and to try a mashup to try one of your images in the style of someone else using just some leftovers that you have on your palette. Have fun with it. Can't help myself, <laughs> just adding in. A little bit of extra just with some white oil pastel again pushing the contrast 